Hi, welcome to my discussion on present value. Present value, of course, depends on the um, depends on the compound interest formula, and the way it's given in the textbook is this way, where I requires a calculation of the interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods per year, and n is really the number of compounding periods per year multiplied by the time in years. So basically this is the interest rate per compounding period and this is the number of compounding periods all the way to maturity. So what do we mean by present value? Really all we're doing is rearranging the terms in this formula or for that matter this formula to solve for the principle. The principle would be known as the present value. The A the A then is the amount it would be after some time t had passed, meaning we would then rechristen this as the future value. So here we have present value or the principal, which will become the present value. Uh, often abbreviated PV and this is called the future value often abbreviated FV okay or um, value at time T really is the value at time T uh, we uh, for the purposes of this um, this section will we use the ter terminology present value or PV and future value or FV um, and quite often um, the variable PV this is a single variable it takes two letters and the reason it's expressed as two letters is because in a uh, graphing calculator such as a TI-83 it's actually shown this way and future value is usually shown this way so uh, the book will actually the book will actually use the same notation and I will too just to uh, be in agreement with the flow of the text so um, we require that this become rearranged so uh, we're solving for P that means that we're first of all dividing both sides by P that becomes A over P on this side and this is equal to P divided by P which is nothing more than 1 plus I to the power N but we're solving for P meaning that um, we got to flip this over so this becomes actually P over A and this becomes 1 over 1 plus I to the power N if you like you can also say 1 plus i to the power of negative n. You can do it this way too. They're interchangeable. Um, we'll stick with this though because now we want to get rid of a. We want to move a back to this side and so and so we actually end up with this. Principle equals the amount over 1, one plus i to the power n. Sorry, well, uh, I'll do it this way now. And as I said, that a was the future value. So when all is said and done, this really becomes future value over 1 plus i to the power n, and this is the present value. You could also use this idea and instead of having it expressed as a fraction, have it expressed as a product, uh, future value multiplied by 1 plus i to the power of minus n. Maybe there's some question here as to what the purpose of this is about. Well, uh, one really big deal is that let's say that you have you know, a purchase that you'd like to make that you can't afford right now. So what you do is you save up your money and you save up your money in a bank account where um, it's actually returning a certain rate of interest 
Uh, and you want to ask yourself, if, a, if an item costs $2,000 and I can't afford, I, I don't have that money on hand right now, how much money can I invest in order to have that $2,000 at a certain rate of interest over a certain number, certain amount of time? It's in the service of ask, answering the question, how much money do I need to have on hand now to have this money in the future? Question three uh, in the text says that in six years money invested at seven and a half percent per annum compounded quarterly will grow to eight hundred seven dollars and twenty one cents um, that's kind of a deterministic way of wording it but just imagine that this is the amount of money you want to save up at the end of a six-year period so how much money do you need to invest now so our time is six years our number of compounding periods per year is quarterly so that means there are four compound, compounding periods per year and our future value is eight hundred and seven dollars and twenty one cents so what's our present value this is the one we don't know so we don't know the present value we're asked to calculate it for part A so how much money should be invested now okay so this means that we have uh, basically present value equals 807.21 multiplied by 1 plus, oh, what's the interest rate? The interest rate was 7.5%. That's pretty good interest. Man, I'd, I'd invest more money than that if, I, if that was my interest rate. So then we have 7, oh, it's not 7.5, it's 0.075, um, because the interest rate has to be expressed as a decimal in the formula. So 0 0.075 over the number of compounding periods to the power of, uh, we're told, 6 years. So 6 multiplied by the number of compounding periods, 6 times 4. So, to put it all together, 807.21 uh, times 1 plus 0 0.075, 0 0.075 divided by 4 is 0 0.01875. You know what, if I'm adding it to 1, doesn't that make it 1.01875? Why don't we do that? Okay, to the power of 6 times 4, so that's to the power of 24. Okay, actually it's to the power of negative 6.4 and negative 24 because we're, us we're not using the fractional formula. So, okay, 807, 21 multiplied by, in brackets, 1.01875 to the power of negative 24, and we get $516.85. It means that we almost have to have all of our money in place to have $807 in six years, or more than half the amount of money. So there you go. There's the answer to part A. The second part of the question is not as hard. Second part of the question says how much interest will be earned in six years? Well, if we just take um, 807.21 and subtract 516.85, we'll get the answer to our question. So. So 807.21 subtract 516.85 and we just get $290.36. So um, I'm going to jump over to question 13. Um, Question 13 states that a loaf of bread costs $3.50 in 2009. What was the price of a similar loaf of bread 
1990, assuming that the average inflation rate is 3% per annum uh, and, um, and compounded once per year. And how much did a similar loaf of bread cost in 1900? So it's kind of an interesting question. Of course, we're kind of making uh, sort of uh, false assumptions here that the inflation rate will be identical for every single year going back to 1990. I can assure you that that is not the case. We've had periods of high inflation and periods of what we call deflation or negative inflation where prices actually dropped, uh, especially during the Great Depression and even during now, during COVID-19. Trying to answer question 13. So part A, uh, a loaf of bread cost $3.50 in 2009. Now, the way that's worded is that 2009 is the value in the future, which we have to think, oh, that's now in the past, but because of the book, the book was saying, okay, this is the present value, <laughs> presently the value, but because uh, we're talking about prices of a loaf of bread going back even further than 2009, this compels us to say that the future value is $3.50 for a loaf of bread. And what was the price of bread in 1990? So that means the time is 2009 take away 1990. It's 19 years. The compounding period is just one. The rate of inflation is 3%, so 0.03. .03. The present value, which is what we're trying to find, the present value meaning the value back in time, going back in time in 1990. We're trying to estimate the price of a loaf of bread back in 1990. The future value, that's what we'll do. So PV equals future value. $3.50, put the decimal point down there, and then 1 plus 0 0.03, 1.03 .03 to the power of negative n. 19 times 1 is 19, so the formula means I have to make that negative. $1.99, it's roughly $2, so it's about $2 for a loaf of bread back in 1990. Okay, part B. Part B is back in 1900, so T gets changed to, uh, because it's 1900, we're doing 2009, take away 1900 is 109, C is still 1, R is still 3%, okay? And so we're still using the same formula. So what would be the value back in 1900 if you know the price of bread is still this in 2009 and we go 1.03 1 to the power of negative 109 so that's all we do notice that all we did was change the exponent really um, we're just doing almost the same calculation so uh, now take your 3.5 times 1.03 to the negative 109 and I get 14 cents so equals approximately 0 0.14 so bread was about 14 cents back in 1900